Greetings. So I'm currently working on another Dumb Things People Say to Atheists video, but I want to put that on hold for a moment and tell you about an encounter I had with a Christian on my personal Facebook page. I know you're probably looking forward to another Dumb Things video, but sometimes things happen in my personal life that I think present a good teachable moment, and when that happens, I want to seize the opportunity in hopes that my experience can help others in similar situations. This will be a shorter video than most of you are used to, especially if you're a recent subscriber, but those who have been around before I drifted into the 15 to 30 minute range will find this length familiar. Anyway, it all went down a couple days after the attack on the Capitol, a weird time on my Facebook feed in which a lot of conservative evangelicals I grew up with were either making apologies for the attack or blaming it on Antifa because of course, and I was just foolhardy enough to chime in on a politically charged conversation about a Tucker Carlson article when out of the blue a Christian I know decided to reply like this. Since you do not believe in Jesus and have rejected him and proclaim that rejection continually, having professed to be a believer slash Christian in leadership roles at church and a Christian school principal, then, then, after a falling out, you, you have declared yourself an atheist. An atheist who is trying to make a name for himself in the atheist community. There is a no righteousness in any of your responses. And I would hope that those who claim to be believers in Jesus can discern such. I want the righteous truth in meekness. All three, meekness, truth, righteousness, or none at all. That is a, my litmus test in all of this from now on for all of the many, many sides. And while the sentence structure is, um, let's say, a bit hard to follow, I mean, at least offer us the relief of a little punctuation and maybe, you know, close your parentheses, you probably get the drift. Absolutely out of left field, the person decided, in a conversation about politics, to come at me with a totally uninformed rant about why they thought I became an atheist. And since it took me two or three readings to fully digest this unstructured lump of words, let me briefly itemize what they said about me. 1. I not only don't believe in Jesus but rejected him. 2. I proclaim my rejection constantly. 3. I professed to be a believer, even as I took leadership roles in the church and school. 4. I declared myself an atheist after a falling out with other Christians. 5. I'm trying to make a name for myself as an atheist. And finally, 6. Because of all this, there's no righteousness in anything I say, the implied point being that nobody should listen to me. In short, the person decided to blurt out, Hey everybody, this guy's an atheist, so why would you listen to him? Thinking it was an adequate way to discredit me. And sadly, it might have been for a lot of the people in the conversation. But what I want to focus on is what this person said about my character and intentions as an atheist. Not that I need to vindicate myself in front of this audience of all people, but because the assumptions this person made about me are all too common. Essentially, they were trying to tell me my own deconversion story, doing so in a scripted, accusatory way full of degrading Christian stereotypes about atheists. And I'm sure many of you have heard or will hear much of the same. So I want to share how I retold my story, in hopes that in doing so I might help some of you unpack a lot of the insinuations that are crammed into this language, and maybe add to your vocabulary as you try to better understand and articulate your own story in the face of things like this. Here's what I had to say. 1. I have never done anything that I consider rejecting Jesus. To say that I did suggests that I willfully walked away from someone I knew or at least suspected existed. But this couldn't have been further from the truth. My Christianity meant as much to me as yours does to you, and realizing I didn't believe in it was a difficult, often painful process. Far from running from Jesus, I persistently and deliberately kept running to him. But eventually I had to acknowledge to myself that the figure I had in my mind and who I thought I loved did not appear to be there. This was not fun for me. It is not fun for many who leave the faith. To suggest that they just rejected Christ or their faith is not only presumptuous, but it trivializes the attachment they had to their faith and their painful process of leaving it. 2. I guess you could say I proclaim my rejection constantly, setting aside whether constantly is an exaggeration, but that's just a strange, extremely imprecise way of saying that I publicly disagree with a perspective I find problematic. 
it would be the equivalent of how other people proclaim their rejection of liberalism or proclaim their rejection of evolution. But much more than just expressing an opinion, I try to help other non-believers process what they're going through and understand that they're not alone. I feel like there's supposed to be some kind of insinuation of religious fervor or pointless fixation in this phrasing, but if there is, it's inappropriate and inaccurate. On a side note, I don't talk about religion on Facebook nearly as often as Christians do, but it seems every mention of it sticks out in their minds and gets tallied against me. 3. Whatever's meant by saying I profess to be a believer, I actually was a believer. That's a plain fact. I sincerely believed God existed, and I both identified with and tried to live according to the tenets of Christianity as I understood them. And yes, part of my belief led me to volunteer for various roles in the church and to serve as a teacher and principal at a Christian school. I taught many good things in those roles, and I feel regret and guilt over other things that I taught, but I did it all with a sincere heart. I worked harder at the Christian school for less money than I've made at any other full-time job since college, and I did so willingly as a labor of love based on what I believed at the time. Did I struggle with doubts? Yes, like all believers do. But at no time did I profess a faith that I didn't believe in. For I did not just up and declare myself an atheist after a falling out. Yes, I disagreed strongly with how the leadership of a church handled the situation at one point, and at the time I was angry about it. But what happened after that? I went to another church where I was much happier, had a lot more respect for the leadership, and eventually came to realize the previous church had done me a favor by asking me to leave. All the while I was still a Christian. But with that experience well behind me, lingering doubts continued to grow until I had to acknowledge that I no longer believed. It's as simple as that, and anybody who suggests I suddenly rage quit Christianity after some kind of argument within the church is either pulling things out of their heads or speculating based on second-hand gossip. For the rest of you who discover someone you know as a non-believer, I implore you, don't just make up garbage like this. If you wonder whether a specific situation contributed to someone's non-belief, you can do a very simple thing. Ask them. And if you don't think they're going to be honest with you, then just admit you don't know, because you don't. And by the way, the idea that anybody who believed deep down would send themselves to hell despite someone they'd been in an argument with is just weird. 5. I am not trying to make a name for myself in the atheist community, and this person has no reason to say I am. Am I involved in the atheist community? Yes. But you can't assume this means I'm trying to make a name for myself any more than you can assume pastors are just trying to make a name for themselves in the Christian community. I can only take this as a basic petty jab, and I don't know what more to say about it. The fact that this person used all this to build up to the conclusion that since I don't believe, there's no righteousness in anything I say, is very problematic. A lot of people from varying backgrounds have valuable things to contribute to a conversation. To suggest a person must possess what you consider righteousness, versus more precisely definable traits such as intelligence, integrity, compassion, or character, to have anything worth saying is reductive. To automatically conclude that those outside your faith lack righteousness and thus aren't worth listening to is horribly insular. Now does a Christian have a right to assume this about non-believers? Well yeah, of course. And I can empathize with the struggle to understand the sincerity of non-believers in light of Christian doctrine and some of the things the Bible says about them. Trust me, I've been there. But when you do make these assumptions, you're shutting yourself out from conversation with a lot of other people and retreating into self-imposed isolation. Literally the only thing that made me leave Christianity was the fact that I didn't believe in a specific factual proposition. That's it. This is going to be the case for almost all deconverts, so you're not going to understand or communicate with them at all by telling them they just wanted to sin or must have gotten mad and stormed out of church or whatever. Of course you can always sit in a circle with like-minded people and repeat that kind of scripted gossip about them, but that circle will be isolated and increasingly marginalized and you will have nobody but yourself to blame for it. Anyway, I hope this helps. Unfortunately, some Christians will try to tell you how you became an atheist and why, and they might try to use the fact that you don't believe to automatically dismiss anything you say. This is totally inappropriate, and it's worth saying that I had Christians come to my side and agree that it's inappropriate. But don't let people tell your story for you, and don't let them dismiss you just because you don't believe in their thing. How you respond is up to you, and a lot will depend on relational dynamics and where you are in life. But while these accusations can feel jarring, 
and maybe give you a deep-seated feeling of guilt, remember that they are unfounded, inappropriate, and mean-spirited. And if they actually reflect anything, it's just the insecurity a Christian feels when trying to process the idea of people rationally and sincerely leaving the faith. Hopefully you can keep that in mind, whatever comes your way. And whatever social pressure you feel around you, this way of talking to you is just trashy and totally undeserved. This program was made possible by a grant from Anthony Guthrie, John Adams, Maggie Danger, S.R. Foxley, Bob Generic, The Crowd Pleaser, and Q, and by the generous support of viewers like you. If you'd like to join them in pledging to this channel, please find a link to the Prophet of Zod Patreon below.